the Quran, the holy book of the Muslims and the acclaimed word of their omni-perfect God. With over one and a half billion followers, making up just under a quarter of the world's population, prostrating to the will of this book and its projected God, Islam has become a force which, in its ability to mobilize believers, has become in its own right a global power. Yet in all of its power over its followers, one fact astounds me. The very capability that the Quran and the appointed leaders of Islam have in amputating the mind of the believer from reality on the most simple of factors, each showing the fingerprints of men writing as if blind to the world in a book they claim sacred. The first of these cases I wish to tackle is possibly one of the most basic at its roots, yet time and time again I have seen the followers of Allah deny proven scientific fact. I am referring to the passage found in the Quran in the 25th chapter, passage 53, which makes the objective and testable claim that the two waters of the earth, the sweet fresh water and the bitter salt water, cannot mix. The passage states, and I do quote, And he it is who has let flow forth the two large bodies of water, one sweet and palatable, and the other salty and bitter. And he has set a barrier and an insurmountable forbidding band that keeps them apart. Yet whilst we have long entered the 21st century, there are people of the Islamic faith who will defend this passage not just as fact but as divine and unquestionable truth. Sadly, for them in a world of science, the shield of sanctity that they attempt to flee behind does not exist, and everything is up to be challenged. It's science! The major issue for these Islamic apologists lies with the very concept of the hydrological cycle. Many people around the world know about the workings of evaporation, condensation, precipitation and transportation. In short, water is evaporated from large bodies of water, such as seas and oceans, where it condensates into cloud formations. These then move over land until they eventually cool and fall as precipitation. The waters gather, following the draw of gravity downwards, forming streams, tributaries and rivers which transport the waters back to the sea. It's here that we see the issue with the Quran's claims. Estuaries. These are the points at the river's end where the fresh water joins the salt water, forming numerous gradients of salinity. At these junctions, different types of estuaries can form with different shapes of gradient. First, there is the salt wedge estuary, which occurs where there is little disturbance from longshore drift and the tide, as well as the river's output is far superior to the ocean's input. In this case, Fresh water, lighter than a mineral-filled salt water, flows over the top, forming a wedge shape below with the seawater. Gradually the water diffuses, starting from the deeper depths working its way to the surface, giving the gradient its characteristic bent-back shape, with a steep gradient from fresh to salt. Then we have the vertically homogeneous or well-mixed estuary. Here the sea's forces are at their strongest, the longshore drift and the tidal factors causing convection, which in turn aids the rate of diffusion, resulting in there being no vertical difference in salinity, like the salt wedge estuary, but a lateral change the further you get away from the river. When you have a mix between the two, where the ocean's factors are not as strong as in the vertically homogeneous estuary, yet are still stronger than the salt wedge estuary, we end up with a partially mixed estuary, which shares features from the previous two resembling the salt wedge estuary, yet retains a more gradual gradient. The last type of estuary, often known as the reverse or inverse estuary, occurs where the river has or is nearly dried up. Here the sea actually comes into the estuary, in which the shallower water allows for rapid evaporation in comparison to further out, making the water inland saltier than out to sea. What the first three estuaries show, clearly, is that not only do fresh and salt water mix, but other factors play a role in the speed of which the diffusion takes place. In salt wedge estuaries, the silt that the river has carried downstream travels over the salt water with the fresh water, 
being dispensed at the tip of the wedge, which causes it to cascade down, creating what seems like a solid barrier where the silt stops. That leads many believers to argue that this is a solid barrier that separates the two. What they don't realize is that this effect occurs due to the mixing of salt and fresh water. If it didn't occur, then fresh water would merely continue to slide across the ocean surface, unable to diffuse with the salt water or deposit its load. This point of mixture, where the water gradually shifts from fresh to saline, is referred to as the transition zone. The water here being referred to as brackish water, which hosts a number of plant and animal species. The impact of this is that by denying fresh and salt water mix, the Islamic follower in effect is denying the existence of entire observable ecosystems such as the mangrove swamps, mainly found along river estuaries and hold life such as mangrove crabs or mudskippers, fish that use their pectoral fins to walk on land. One other method of apologetics that the Islamic believers like to attempt is the argument that Allah was talking about a few specific cases around the world. For example, haloclines found inside of caves inland, the melting ice caps, or in freshwater springs that emerge deep down on the ocean's floor. The problem with these claims is, a. they are often supported by a lack of understanding of what happens and why. Haloclines, for one, occur due to pressure and a lack of oxygen as well as the salt levels, and do nothing to halt the mixing of the two, but merely slow it. Similarly, Fresh water from forming ice caps and undersea springs do diffuse with the surrounding salt water. Just the rate in which the ice thaws and the water emerges is great enough to create a pocket of fresh water, which then has a gradual gradient of mixing. As for B, the passage in question clearly refers to two large bodies of water, not small isolated pockets dotted globally. Therefore, it is disingenuous for the believers to attempt to salvage the passage by such means of retrofitting in this way. The so next time a Muslim attempts to try and argue that fresh and salt water do not mix, just remember the fact that the water from our rivers meets the ocean and does in fact mix with it, there being no form of barrier or divine command to prevent them from doing so. You could also try this for yourself. Get a glass of fresh water and a glass of salt water and attempt to mix the two inside a third container. I hope you won't be surprised by the results. This is Essence of Thought, thanking you for watching. Out. Water cycle.